Well, good morning, everybody. Um, obviously, we'll start in five minutes, but I just thought I'd nip in to say hello. How are you? It's lovely to see 28 of you joining me already. Do say hello or where you're from. It's a rather chilly morning, but sunny here in uh, in Banbury, North Oxfordshire. I hope it's all right where you are, and thank you so much for joining me today. Morning, Sally, from sunny Gloucestershire. That's nice. We've got a bit of sunshine today, isn't it? Morning, Janet. It is a beautiful one, but it is rather chilly. Good morning. Hello, Nanette. Morning, Anne. Or oh, is it foggy where you are? I, do you know, I love these foggy mornings. I really do. Morning, Janice. I, I, I don't, there's a magic about them, isn't there? A beautiful, ethereal atmosphere. As I'm driving into work in the mornings lately, um, what's it like in the Netherlands? Um, as I'm driving into work, um, in the morning there because I have to drive through lots of country lanes and I'm I'm quite elevated because Banbury's actually in a little bit of a valley so I live above the valley and um, it's uh, it's so magical to see the low-lying mist good morning Wendy from Sheffield great how oh, grain griner how do you say your name I do apologize my I am I am of Irish stock but not not that good at it from Northern Ireland hello good morning Susan Leon C Leslie, good morning from Kent. Hello, Terry from Grimsbury. Oh, that's miles away from here. <laughs> it's a bit of a trek in the cold, though, isn't it, Terry? Eh? Hope you're doing all right. Wow, 34 of you already, and it's not even 11 o'clock. It's lovely to see you all. Well, to be with you virtually, anyway. Morning, David, from Poole. So we're sort of uh, UK-wide, plus um, from North Hants. Lovely. Morning, Diane. Morning, Michael. And we've got ne the Netherlands joining in. It's a bit like the Eurovision Sun Contest, isn't it? Groenje, of course. You know what? I do know that now. <sighs> Groenje, Yes. Apologies. I'm a bit better with my Welsh than I am with my uh, with my with my uh, Irish pronunciations. I will brush up. I will. My French is appalling as well, but I try that. I have a stab. Sunny Hampshire. So, do you think it's sunny all over UK wide today? Um, I, I think it might be just a nice day. Morning, Carolyn. Tewkesbury. Morning, Sandy. It's sunny everywhere, then, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. We need we need a bit of something, don't we, to um, make us feel better? Right, I'm just going to nip into the uh, theme tune, and then it'll be me again. So, back in a sec. It's me again. <laughs> morning, Jean from Wokingham. Morning, Janet. Morning, Suzanne. Newcastle. Morning, Louise. Oh, so it's Yorkshire's. Um, maybe you'll get it in a bit. Maybe that mist and fog will lift and um, we'll get a nice, beautiful morning for you in Yorkshire. Bristol's overcast. Morning, Amanda. So I've already made a start now. And the reason is I'm not going to get it all done in uh, in time, in 45 minutes today. So I have made a start. Good morning, Marion. From Kerry. Oh. Aya Rosemary, good morning. I'm sure it must be sunny where you are if it's sunny where I am, Rosemary, today. It's lovely to have. Uh, let me just check. So I've just switched screens. Forty nine. Wonderful. Will we get the magic one hundred? We we managed to get a hundred of you um, watching and joining in um, last month. Well, we this month. Now I've I've sort of got a, a sort of Sean Connery. Hello, Brian. Morning, Brian. Um, 
a sort of Sean Connery today. Um, since he passed away um, recently, um, so I thought I'd go. I'm going to go for just an older man. It won't look like Sean Connery. I'm not going to attempt it in 45 minutes, um, but it will give you an idea of what we're aiming for. So what I've done. Morning, Gan. How are you? What's it like in Cheshire today? Um, I've got a, a, wood, a, a canvas panel. It's an A4 canvas panel. I've sketched him out or traced him out um, because of the time. I've then outlined him in burnt sienna acrylic. Let that dry. I've put on an ultramarine. No, I haven't. That's a lie. This is cerulean blue, Payne's grey. No. Do you know what? I can't speak today. I honestly do know my colours. Morning, Tracy. This is cerulean blue, burnt sienna and white as a background. Um, if you're ever stuck and you do portraits and you're stuck with the background, cerulean blue, burnt sienna and white is the perfect background for any flesh tone because it, it doesn't jar the colours. Sometimes, um, if you've ever had your colours done, I know um, my ex-wife had her colours done and... Um, it's amazing because they hold up different colour swatches, don't they, to see whether you're an autumn or a spring or a winter um, and uh, to see how that is. So certain colours can... Hello, Tanya um, from Norwich. Lovely. Um, certain colours can affect how your skin looks. So if you've... I used to wear beige a lot and I stopped wearing beige because it made me look really poorly. Um, morning, Jill. So now I... Um, I wear more colours that suit my palette, which is more autumnal because I'm a ginge. I'm better off with rusts and um, autumnal colours, sagey greens, rusty reds, that kind of thing. Um, but this cerulean blue, burnt sienna and white is a really good background for portraits. Now. OK, Nanette, no problem. Morning, Naomi. So. As I say, I've outlined him in burnt sienna. Now I've started with this underpainting. I'm going to show you a Renaissance method. So this is this was done from the 14th century, 15th century, right up until round about the 1700s for portraits. And it's the best way I've ever found for painting them. So this colour isn't a real colour. It's a mix. And I'll show you how I do it because I've got to finish him off anyway. Um, so the underpainting is going to be in acrylics. Then I'm going to do the glazing and the finishing uh off in oils now hopefully i can get that done at least by 12 o'clock 12 o'clock is my limit i've only because the shop's not open because of lockdown um i've only put four hours on my parking and i've been here for a bit to try and set up and get prepared for this morning so um yeah i need to, i need to be gone because of my parking and i gave i deliberately gave myself the incentive because otherwise i just sit here faffing for ages um and uh, but don't forget the archeryonline.com if you want any art supplies, free shipping, all UK mainland areas um, we post out to. So head to our online shop or even our online classes because they're not stopping either. Um, lockdown is not stopping us from helping you get creative at a time when you need us the most. Um, right, so this colour back in the Renaissance was known as Verdaccio. V-E-R-D-A-C-C-I-O. Verdaccio. And it's not a real colour. It's kind of a swirling of all the colours on the palette. Now, I made this. Uh, it's very close to the tint that Michelangelo used to use. Um, there's actually a, an unfinished painting of his in Manchester. It's called the Manchester Madonna. And part of it is incomplete. And you can see the grey underpainting, the green-grey underpainting that he used um, to create it. So my Verdaccio is this swirl here and it's made up of ultramarine a bit of yellow ochre a tiny bit of burnt sienna and some white it hasn't dried which is useful and i'm using this as um quite dilute wash or a, a, a semi glaze because i want to still see my burnt sienna lines underneath so i didn't want to do it all because i didn't want to just say, oh, very Blue Peter-esque. This is it. I've done it. See ya. Kind of thing. I wanted to take you through the steps. But obviously, I'm I'm conscious of the time. 
And although many of us haven't got a lot to do <laughs> or anywhere to go, um, you know, it would be nice. Morning, Tony from Warrington. Lovely. Thank you for joining us. 59 of you. Morning, Naomi. Right, so let's get this on here. So I'm basically, whatever skin at the moment, I'm doing in this Vidaccio wash. So this is on the canvas. Obviously, I'm using acrylics. Um, in the olden days, obviously pre-acrylics, um, the painters wouldn't use, they would use oils to do the wash. Um, or the Vidaccio underpainting. Or... Pre that, they would use egg tempera, which is egg yolk and pigment. I'm actually going to dilute this even more for where his hair is. We need a bit of underpainting. Now, they use this for Daccio for fabric as well. Um, it was just a really useful underpainting. But... You know, if you've ever seen any paintings um, where you've got, I don't know, Christ on the cross or uh, Christ coming down from the cross, that kind of thing, um, they would leave more of this Vidaccio underpainting showing through for a sort of dead or unhealthy skin tone. I might get the hairdryer on this, but I just wanted to show you. Da, 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 da. And I'll, I think I'll put a pale glaze of it on his um, white shirt as well, because that will help us. Morning, Lynn. Morning, Louise. Morning, Norma. Sunny but nippy. Yes, I think nippy is the word of the day, isn't it? So this is... Uh, pale Vidaccio watch same color I'm just really making it runny um, so as long as it's a greeny gray each artist's Vidaccio was a different tone you see Michelangelo opted for more of a gray color and um, other artists went a bit greener it would very much depend as well on what they were trying to create so I'm going to let that dry for a second while I waffle on, which you're, which you're well accustomed to, um, you hardened demo attendees. Um, 61, lovely to have so many of you with me this morning. I really am pleased to have your company today. Morning, Joe. Um, it's lovely that we can all be together, even though we're all apart, all locked in. I'm actually at the shop because uh, we are um, on open online and now we've gone far more digital with our lessons and things. I've got that many cameras and um, things. It's hard for me to lug home uh, to teach the classes and then have to come back to do online orders and things. So we're open for online orders and all of our online classes. Um, but we can, uh, by arrangement, do click and collect for any of you in Banbury Passing. But if you'd much prefer, we can drop it off or we can uh, post it to you like we did during the last lockdown. Um, so there we go. There you can see our greeny grey Sean Connery-ish person. Not he's not that look like he doesn't look like him that much. But you know, forgive me. It's forty-five minutes. This is not Sky Portrait Artist of the Year. Even they get four hours. Um, that's just because this is an acrylic underpainting, David. I'm just using water because it will dry quicker. So it's just acrylic paint and water for this. So it'll be the oil over the top when I've finished doing my bits with um, the underpainting. So what else the um, Renaissance artists would do? Um, now, I know some of you um, from Banbury and District Art Society, I've done a demo on this before, haven't I? Um, and it's always mind-blowing. As I say, I'm, I'm not necessarily... I do a lot of pet portraits. I do the odd human portrait and I teach portrait classes but I wouldn't say I'm a portrait painter um, I'll post it up later um, it's um, if actually if, if you just google Sean Connery um, high resolution you'll find it um, quite easily um, but I will try and post it later um,
So um, we can um, talk about the Vedaccio style. And um, very good spelling of you, Vedaccio, David, by the way. Nice to see you were listening. Um, well, I haven't put my bird song on. Let's get a bit of bird song on. That might make the weather seem a bit more palatable and less chilly. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but never mind if you can't. It doesn't make any difference. I can and it will make a big difference to me. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm clicking away here. Oh, it is. It's picking up. That's good. Um, so, how else did they work with this Vedaccio? Well, what they then do is they would use a green, like a Terra Verde or a Sap Green or something. Now, I've I've got a tube of green that I don't use very often of acrylic, this is. So, I'm still working in acrylics as the underpainting, but I want to make it a little bit darker. So, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Now... To a lot of you, this might seem a really, really, hello, Diana, um, really, really weird doing it in this way. And it is weird, but it's how they did it for a couple of hundred years, and it seemed to work really well. Um, so I've just mixed a bit of ultramarine with this, I don't know what green this is, I think it's an emerald green, because I just picked up a tube, I never use greens, but for this, it's handy. If I didn't want to use a green, I would use cadmium yellow and ultramarine. Hiya, Vicky. Right, so what they would then do, so they would do everything as we've done, burnt sienna outline, Vedaccio underpainting, then they would use this green. I know, I know. Weird. To do any depth of colour. So we'll be looking at where the dark areas are. Not necessarily everywhere, but certainly enough. I just smudge it with my finger. I'm a bit of a finger painter at times. I feel it helps you sort of get to grips with everything. Now, if those ladies amongst the group, which I think most of you, they're nearly all ladies today, hello ladies, um, will kind of get this probably more than us gents. And it was um, a female student when we did a class that reminded me of this. Um, but that when you're using concealer, is it concealer? Um, it's often green based because it neutralizes the flesh tones. So actually the Renaissance artists, kind of, so I'm just using water again, the Renaissance artists kind of were ahead of their time with this. I will have to get the hairdryer on this when I'm ready to, to move forward. Um, because of time because it's already quarter past so it's it's a it's an interesting technique and i understand that not everybody will like it but as i say i've tr i've tried over the years lots and lots of different ways to render portrait i tried a method that i saw where they um the artist would do a red underpainting and that kind of worked, but it just didn't give me the same sort of feel. And then when I started lecturing in art history, I um, was reading the um, the manual uh, by Sonino Andrea Cennini, um, who wrote the Craftsman's Handbook, which is a 14th century art Bible, really. Um, and it... It tells you how to work. Now, um, Cennini was a student of a student of Giotto. You've heard of Giotto, probably. Um, and uh, G-I-O-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Um, and uh, 
they were he wrote down so Cianini wrote down all of the um teachings from his tutor which were based on Giotto's teachings and they have been passed down for centuries um and mainly only art historians tend to use them um but what i found is most art history students don't actually paint so it's almost like a, i'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna in this because it's a bit green um a lot of art history students don't actually paint so it's a shame really that these sort of methods get missed and then I started applying a lot of them in my own work and in my own teaching and it's amazing how it works it really is if you've just tuned in I haven't gone insane because of lockdown no that happened a long time ago lockdown hasn't got anything to do with it um I'm showing Renaissance methods of uh, portrait painting today um, with acrylics as an underpainting and um, oils on top. I'm actually going to be using alkyds and I'll talk about alkyds as well a little bit more when I get to it. Ask any questions while we're doing this. Do not feel that you can't. Hopefully I'll have the answer. If I haven't have the answer I can look it up for you, no problem at all. And get back at some point. So the light is more on the left hand side. So this, I know this is a little bit weird. I know. And of course this video will remain on our Facebook page forever as all of our previous demonstrations have. I've got it all over my hand again. Fifty nine of you. Lovely to see you all. need to make up a little bit more greeny colour yes you can so you didn't you wouldn't need to um, do the oils on top but I get asked a lot for oil demonstrations which is why I'm doing an oil over the top of this um, so yes you can do this in acrylics I've even taught this method in pastels. Um, I did a pastel portrait class. Um, oh, when was it? It must have been last year. Um, sometime. And we used pastel pencils underneath um, uh, to do the greens and greys. And then we used pink pastel directly on top. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive because in theory it should work. And it did work. Um, but I wasn't sure at the time because um, obviously pastels don't dry so because they're chalk this, this one actually is um, is part of a set of 10 brushes we've got for sale for 6 99 they're just a uh, nylon brushes you can use them for any medium I, I use them for my acrylics uh, but for six ninety nine, this is a number one, and it's a half a half rigger or a liner brush. Wendy, would all the painting be done in oils in the Renaissance period? Interestingly, you can date a Renaissance painting roughly by what it was painted in. So early Renaissance would be uh, tempera. would be tempera and I can't add a photograph on in this group so I'll add it after the demo um, Jenny if that's all right um, as a reference for you um, so yeah early early renaissance is tempera so that's egg yolk plus um, pigment and it's usually tempera on a wooden panel M mid 
ish renaissance is tempera on a canvas panel believe it or not they had them back then and um then sometimes it would be tempera with an oil over painting and then other times it's um in late renaissance it's oils on canvas so many many um centuries passed throughout the whole renaissance you see so um you can kind of kind of date it so oil on canvas is the latest um phase of the renaissance so tempera was the earliest tempera is really nice um i can't see why not it would be trickier with the underpainting if you're doing the underpainting in oil pastels because they stay sticky um but yeah it, in theory it should work on any the only one it doesn't work as well on is um watercolor um because you run the risk of it, it of it lifting off but it's not impossible um you could you could almost um you could do it in watercolor i think but it, it's a little bit harder right so that's got to dry I might get the hairdryer on that. So this is a mixture. So um, I didn't put my cadmium yellow out. I would do cadmium yellow and ultramarine. But this is actually just an, a random tube of emerald that I found with a bit of ultramarine and a tiny bit of burnt sienna. So it's, it is a, a strong green look. I'm just going to get the hairdryer on this. So excuse the noise for a second. Because it needs to be totally dry. For the oil glazing over the top. Weird, isn't it? Hopefully it'll look good. It's always scary when um, when I do live demos, even though I've been doing them for half of my life. It's that what if? What if it all goes wrong and I'm streaming live to the world? And it is, it is, it is, uh, what if it doesn't? So we're not saying it's Sean Connery. It's just an old guy. Um, kind of alien at the moment. Right, now what you may have noticed on my palette originally. So these bits are my acrylics. And I've had to squeeze these all out because of um, just time. So as I say, I'm using alkyds. Now alkyds are oils. They are oil paints, but they dry within 24 to 48 hours. So you can still use terps or thinners um, to clean and dilute. You can still use linseed oil or you can use an alkyd medium. Alkyd mediums, by the way, speeds up the drying process. So if I use an alkyd medium with an alkyd, sometimes it can be dry within an hour, which is a bit too fast. Um, so alkyds are really nice. They don't have an artist or student quality. It is just the one quality um and Windsor and Newton is kind of the only company that uses this sorry Sandy it is a canvas board a canvas panel so it is canvas but on gray board so I'm using alkyds um you can use water-based oils or water soluble oils or standard oils I just need I'm pushed for space in in our room at the moment because we're we obviously it's our packing room for all the online sales and all of our uh, dabbler art subscription boxes um, so I can't have an oil painting just soot out for, for ages. So I'd be using alkyds so they dry. But there is a flesh tint. And the flesh tint is really interesting because I'm a member of a few art pages on, um, on Facebook. And people were saying the flesh tint is too pink. Um, the purpose of underpainting is to save you a lot of time. Um, so you can put, um, sometimes you can put, um, random colors in. So if you were going to do something and you wanted it to pop, so say you were going to do a, a landscape or a seascape rather, if you're going to do a seascape, you could do your whole underpainting in, I don't know, like cadmium red. Um, and then when you brush your sea color, which is sort of like this over the top, which is a complementary opposite, the colors will be more vibrant. So 
um, in one sense, an underpainting can help your colours um, pop or stand out if you use a complementary opposite. Or in other sense, it just helps um, layer up the painting to give it more depth. So um, up until the Impressionist period, all paintings were done known as staged or studio painting. And a studio painting would be done all from the studio from sketches, because I didn't have photographs. And they would often be done in black and white first, in grayscale. Then colour glazes would be applied building up the layers and then the impasto thicker work sometimes with a knife would be done as the final layer so there were like four or five stages to a painting hence staged or studio painting but then the impressionists came along in fact john constable over here did it much sooner than the impressionists um painting outside en plein air um painting what they could see in one go basically so in that sense in the modern sense all brush strokes um, are needed for the final work whereas in the studio or stage painting the under painted brush strokes get hidden and they're just there to build up the depth and the layers so the flesh tone I've got here is very very pink and not very natural um, but back in the renaissance they had the same thing their flesh tone was known as cinebrezza um, c-i-n-i-b-r-e S-E, I think, Cinebrezza, um, from Cinnabar, which is a very pinky red. And um, it works really well with the green underpainting and the Vedaccio underpainting. So it, it, it works a lot better than you think. So what they would do, let me, um, I've got a filbert here. Um, this is an acrylic filbert, but you can use it for oils. A filbert is the same as a flat brush, um, but it's got a rounded edge. Um, which makes blending a bit nicer. So I've got a bit of um, turpentine here and I'm just going to pull out the flesh tone. So this is oil. If I'd got a live audience, I would more than likely... Um, well, I know you're live, but you know what I mean, in the classroom with me. Um, I would more than likely do a um, water-soluble oil so there's less smell because sometimes people with asthma uh, can be affected by it. So I'm just making it slightly transparent. So layer one. And as I say, I, I should be done by 12-ish. might go for a bigger brush actually now this is very reflective so I might have to turn my lamp off but what you should see is how it's muted all of the green tones. Let me mute this lamp a little bit. Oh, that's off. There we go. That's much better. Um, so I'm really going in with a, a nice transparent. So this is just turpentine and um, alkyd. If I wanted to um, give myself more blending time, I would more than likely use a linseed oil with this um right if you don't have good question robert oh you're full of good questions this morning um if you don't have a flesh tone um a good a good mix let me move up to a slightly bigger brush a good mix is burnt sienna crimson a small amount of yellow ochre and a hint of white for your basic flesh tone this is Apologies if my sleeve's in the way. I'm trying to follow the contours of his head. Oh, the smell of the terps is just hitting. Mm. 
I'll probably sound like I've got a cold in them in. Can you see how it's neutralized that green? But it's given me a dark tone. It's given me a shadow. Now, I have done portraits and um, my other students from varying classes can vouch that we have also done um, still life, not using Vidaccio, but using uh, black and white. So we've painted in grayscale and then um, did color glazes over the top. It's a really, it, it's, it's great for two, um, for two reasons. The first reason is it's really economical because black and white paint are the cheapest. In Even in artist's quality, black and white paint is the cheaper mix. Um, so you're saving money because you're using more black and white and less, um, less colour. The colour is where the pigment comes in. So it does mean that you can technically uh, buy better quality paints um, in acrylics or oils and then because um, you're using a lot of black and white. Um, now, in that same sense, um, you can do this in landscape form as well. You can do uh, black and white underpainting and colour over the top. It does work in anything. Um, with portraits, you do need to do a bit more work on um, the flesh. So if I was painting a corpse, I would leave it at this tone. You've got, you've got to bear with this process. Hello, Sue. Um, so if I was painting a corpse, it would just stay this colour. So can you see how instantly he's now not, not as green? But you can see just slightly heavier paint and you lose that underpainting. But that, that does work in your favour at times. So what what the impression, well, the Renaissance artists would then do is they would um, work out varying lightnesses of flesh tone, of chinabrasa, chinabrasa. While that's sort of mulling over, I ought to do a little bit with the eyes because basically the eyes are just um, acrylic. I haven't done anything with those at all. Isn't this amazing? Do try it, try it, Susan, because it makes a huge, huge difference. So if you haven't got oils, you can do this in acrylics. And if you've got a flesh tone, it's the best way to work with it because um, it's a bit pink. So you end up having to spend a lot of time lightening it or turning it into a more realistic pink, but it works with this. So what they do is they'd go in, I'll do the eyes in a minute because I've just seen the time. And I'm going to add a little bit more white to my flesh tone. And then I will start glazing over part of it and leaving other areas. 
So you don't want to keep painting over the darks because then they're no longer dark, are they? If I was spending all of the day on this, I would, of course, be blending and scumbling and softening and all of the lovely techniques that I would do. But I'm not because of time. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm just letting the colour run out of my brush as it moves over to the, the darker side. Um, you can see that the side camera here is probably um, giving me a more realistic colour for this um, because it, it isn't as reflective because the light is directly overhead. So I'm leaving some of the dark lines deliberately. So this demo will probably last a little bit longer than the others because I, I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Because it is important and I'm really enjoying the smell. Ah, uh, well, you see, part, part of doing my job is to make it look easy. But to be fair, I wouldn't do it if it was hard. <laughs> I wouldn't. I can't even do a jigsaw because I haven't got the patience. So this is just a basic white flat brush. These brushes are, um, they're brilliant. They're woodpecker brushes. We also do the sea white brushes and they're only, what, 2 95 each. And I get a lot of professionals coming in the shop um, asking for these by name because they're just amazing. You don't mind ruining them, um, but they, they keep their points for such a long time. Um, and the reason why I'm using these is because um, I could have cracked open a new set um, of my 699 brushes, to be honest, but obviously I'm a shop, so I have to sell them, which is quite hard when you're also an artist because you just want to buy everything that you've got in, you know? So I'm deliberately withholding some areas on here or working a little bit softer. Hello, Sue. course you can you'll be able to watch it later and it's really important to have your socially distanced chats um at the moment isn't it while we're all struggling to come to terms with lockdown number two i agree amanda i agree i remember my dad did an amazing jigsaw and i think it was, it was one of the um beautiful stained glass windows in notre dame i think um back in the 80s and uh that went glued and put on a thing because I think he thought the same thing. I'm not. I haven't spent hours painting doing this jigsaw to to screw it all up and put it back in the box. So we had to suffer it for several years. He was dead proud of that jigsaw. Now do bear in mind this is a um, a quick demo. So don't don't come at me with the the nastiness doesn't it and it, and it's it's so honestly it is so easy it really is i will add a little bit of pink to this because it'll look a little bit pasty if i'm not careful um you can add yellow ochre to the colors it depends on your flesh tone doesn't it at the end of the day um but too much yellow ochre and um, it causes a bit of an issue. Uh, because it looks like you might have some sort of medical problem if you uh, if you put too much yellow ochre in, but a little bit of um, 
yellow ochre in flesh tone can do a really nice job. Ah, well, Susan, scroll through our videos. Not now, of course, because you're watching me in action. But at the end of the lesson, um, at the end of the demo, in, in probably about 10, 15 minutes, um, if you go to the, the shop page that you're on now and just scroll to um, the video section, um, I did a series during lockdown just after of um called oh i can't remember what it was called it was something anyway and um i did a whole a whole 10 minute tutorial in watercolor but it, it's useful for all all media on all the different types of flesh tone every different sorts of skin tone um that is available i did a uh, a demo to give you a rough idea on on how it worked because when you're doing wrinkles you see we've all got them i'm getting more and more as each week passes um the um they're indented and often people stick them over the top and they don't look right because they're not on the top they're underneath so what i'm going to do now is add more white to my flesh tone so I've, again i've got a bit of um thinners in here and then I can start looking at where the brighter areas of flesh tone are and I really want to get the eyes in as well so um, hopefully if I have to if you have to leave me you'll be able to come back and um, work it out and, and watch it a little bit more And because these these are oils, um, even though I'm sort of working quite quickly with them, I should be able to get another brush in. I think this is one that I will carry on with long after you know, over, over next week or something. So if you, because the light's coming from the left um, and, and above, so with your wrinkles, if you highlight the underneath or the opposite side to the light, it really does help make them come to life a little bit more so yeah please bear in mind this is going to be less than an hour's portrait so and uh, you know yeah the um the camera gets scared of of um contrast so that's where it, it keeps changing the tones all the time my finger oils are don't be scared of them um joy um oils are really lovely i started off my career in oils a long a long time ago now um and what's nice about them is that you can you can fiddle with them a little bit so you you're not really um lost you can add more or um scrape it off even depending what you're working on um so you can manipulate it you can blend it so you know with acrylics it dries so quickly sometimes and and it and you can't really get that feel that grasp um oils are slightly different in that it should allow you to now i'll probably have to do a few darker areas in that but hopefully you can see this sort of greeniness um, does help. I'm going to just get a little bit of crimson, just a tiny bit because it can be too much. To warm him up a little. I 
don't want to make him up. So he looks like some pantomime dame, but he will need a, a little bit of blood in here somewhere. So this is all with the same um, flat brush. Wendy, yes they do. Oils do um, do take weeks to dry or months to dry, but Alkids, which is what I'm using, don't. They dry within, well, I don't know, about half an hour. Well, a couple of days in theory. I just need to darken a little bit of... Um, his cheeks so if I go in with a bit of burnt sienna a little bit of flesh tone and a very small amount of ultramarine I can just add a little bit more of the blending colour might go even darker but it is it is a bit scary doing it live if I'm honest especially in a limited time frame um I love gouache Diane um and it kind of is I mean uh, gouache is actually older than both watercolor and um definitely acrylic and uh, it's it's a really useful tool um, I use it for a lot of pet portraits because it's opaque and I know I can um, mix up an overlay lights on top of darks. So alkids are oils but fast drying. So if you've used oils, any of you, you might have used an alkid medium. Um, alkids have been around 20, 30 years, maybe more. Um, so it's the same thing as an oil but just slightly faster drying. So this is that more browny colour that I'm just trying to um, add a little bit more tone and depth to the face. I'm just conscious of the time. I know most of you won't mind, but uh, as I say, my car parking um, is w will mind. Um, so that's slightly darker tone. So alkids are fast drying oils. So it's A L K Y D S, and um, they're brilliant. If I just show you a tube, and they're between five and seven pounds for a thirty-seven mil. But obviously, doing it this way is much much cheaper. I'm going to quickly try and do a few other things um, on here because obviously his eyes haven't had anything done to them. So the whites of the eye, I'm actually going to make a pale grey. So that's Payne's grey and white because the whites of your eyes are never actually white at all sometimes they can be a bit creamy or yellow go a little bit darker as I say this is more of a, a, a very big um, Oh, I've, I've just answered that question for you. That's all right. Um, trying to do this today is, is a huge undertaking. I often, I question myself all the time. I think, oh, why have I said I'm going to do that today in that time? What am I thinking? But it's good for you to see a bit of quick work, I think. And um, so I'm just going a little bit darker with the grey. Give my brushes a bit of a clean. So I've already got the burnt sienna and the 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 colours there in acrylics, but I am going to do it more with the oil on top, so I can get a bit more of a blend. So I've got a lovely burnt sienna here, and what's great about this is that you can um the, the colours are all the same. So if you're like I've I'm using 
you know, tradition. I'm using the um, what what critics have I used? I've used system no a bit of system three and a bit of Snellier abstract um, with the acrylics. Uh, but, but as long as they're all decent quality paints, all the colours are going to look similar. And because they look similar, when you go over them, I'm going to add a bit of blue to the burnt sienna to make it darker. And I'm going to do that just at the top of the eye. And this might be useful for a few deeper, deeper lines. If I make it nice and dilute. So I apologise for speeding through. and leaning on a lot of this paint now. I'll go a little bit darker around the edges of his eyes. So this is just burnt sienna and ultramarine. The thing to remember with oils is that thick paint doesn't stick to thin paint. So if I've diluted, I'll struggle to get a thicker paint on top of that now. Um, so it's better to do your thicker stuff afterward, uh, on top, uh, underneath, and then your thicks, um, and then your thins. Sometimes they call it thick over lean or something like that, but just remember that thick paint doesn't stick to thin paint. Gosh, look at the time. I'm going to carry on. I'm carrying on. I'm a trooper, me. So this is actually a watercolour brush, it's a proline watercolour brush that I'm using now. But I've, I've sort of made my paint so thin that it should work in my favour. Now I've lost a bit of his eye lid. So I need to put that in. Like so. slightly dark I never did do the dark around the edges of the pupils iris rather that's really quite thin there I don't want to use Payne's grey just yet because that's that's the really dark bit so I'm sort of um, hedging me bets with ultramarine and burnt sienna at the mo. Right, so while that dries, I'm going to use Payne's Grey to do his eyebrows. And that's got to be really runny, so I'm, I'm making it like ink. And by doing that, it will give me a nice um, fluid line. If it doesn't flow, it's not runny enough. Same with his eyelashes. Now he's got a lot of eyelashes. He's got lovely long eyelashes. Um, so if 
I had lots and lots of time I would um, I would be very careful over all of this but um, sadly I don't if I got more time again I would put an oil coating over that background color and um, do it in the same color but more of a oil version lower lid there that's a bit it's a bit too girly I think but that'll have to do for now sorry for rushing you Sean well oh, that's all right don't worry about me Barry you just get started and make it work make me look beautiful I will Sean don't you worry darker in here so you can kind of see how it works I'm going to dilute some white now just to do some highlights in his eye if it will let me Yeah, I will. I don't know when that will be, but I will definitely do that for certain. Because it all takes a little bit of time. So I'm just doing a few highlights on his nose. I'll do a little bit on his hair and then I'll stop. Just to give you an idea. Um, so a bit of white, a bit of black or Payne's grey. roll the brush around make it like ink build the layers up and work now I think I might do it a bit darker than that to start with Are you all invested in this? Do really try it, William. Um, oh, Will, hello. Um, it, it's one of the, as I say, it's one of the oldest methods I have ever read and, and looked at. Yet, it works. You've seen it work. I mean, this isn't even a good portrait. This is me, this is me rushing in, in, when did I start? 11 o'clock. So I've just been doing it an hour. Um, although I did do a little bit of extra underpainting before. To, otherwise I wouldn't have got to this point. But um, hopefully you can see how it works. I'm not looking at the reference as I should be. So for those of you that are sort of invested in this now. Um, what I would do is um, get all of this in. And, and the beauty is that obviously when you um, when you're working with alkids, but this as I say, this would work in acrylics, so don't don't think you've got to go and invest in some alkids. Um, I can give you a really nice art shop that sells them. Um, hint hint. but, um, they're, they're harder to buy in sets now, uh, but it's just as cheap to buy them individually, to be honest. Um, that's a bit too much there. Soften it with my finger. Um, oh, good. Thank you, Sue. You can come again. I think the eyebrows do start to give it away. I need to do more work on it, but obviously... It was all about the underpainting and the oils on top today, so I'm not too worried that I'm not going to get it finished. And then I'll probably, uh, because you can see his flesh in there, I can I could do a little bit more with the flesh. I can do a bit more with the darker tones. 
Um, you don't want to hide the um, the green that you put in underneath. It's there to still give a bit of depth and body to the features. Um, but that doesn't mean that you have to just leave it. You can just keep adding. But you'll get to the point where you will go, oh, I've, I've added too much now and it, it, it's not looking like him or I've lost, I've lost the depth. And that's the point where you have to stop, really. You have to be honest with yourself and, um, and change it. But you see, because I've got that oil there, I can just do a little bit more with the dark. Not an issue. Maybe just a little bit of dark there. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily a likeness as such, but then it is also not finished. Um, and this is without using a sitter. Obviously, it would it would be slightly different once you've got a sitter in in your midst. Um, but just do a little bit of reflected light underneath his nose. I'll post some photo. I'll post it as it is. I'll post a photograph of this as is, and um, I said I'd stop at ten past no matter what, didn't I? Let me just put in a few of the Payne's grey hair. So this is really dilute, and because it's dilute, it is drying really quickly. But um, as a free demo, you're not getting too bad to your money's worth, are you? So don't forget, if you want to donate, we are having to shut um, during lockdown. We can only trade slightly online. Um, our classes are still running ahead. But if you want to go to our PayPal account and drop us a quid or something to, to give your appreciation for today's lesson, then you can. Um, we'll still be doing these every month regardless. Um, and as I say, our online classes are going to continue no matter what. Um, so we'll still hopefully be able to bring you um, everything and keep you uh, keep you entertained and keep you creative. Oh, you see that eye? I need to darken inside of that eye a little bit more there. It's really you've got to spend a lot of time looking at everything. The more you look, the more you see. Thank you, Janet. Oh, you're all so nice, aren't you? Thanks. Um, the more things you'll see. And um, sometimes it feels a bit counterintuitive to darken certain areas and, and whatnot. Oh, I'm blobbed. And then, you know, you can then build up with your whites because he's gone more white now. If I was going to put the, um, I could paint it all pink and then paint the hair on top, I suppose. Um, but I'm more than likely um, going to just put the white hair a little bit higher up so I'm really having to make this like white water or milk I suppose white water good that's what we like thank you everyone you, you really are lovely I take it all back You know, it, it is honestly scary doing a live demo on a portrait. I can knock up a... You see, if I was doing a tree, it wouldn't be the same because a tree is a tree is a tree, isn't it? And I can fudge a tree to a degree and it'll still look like a tree. 
but when it's a portrait, I could I could have I could have chosen a random portrait today, couldn't I? And then it wouldn't have mattered. Good, thank you, David. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to finish like that. So that gives you the bare bones of this. Um, I've made him a lot younger. Um, but obviously I've got a lot more work to do. He does look different on, that, um, on both cameras. Um, he looks very different, but you can see how the painting works so for for an hour's demo i suppose it'll do i should have made it easier for myself wouldn't shouldn't i really i why, why have i chosen this today anyway you kind of get the idea and when this dries i can do more with it i need to shade his nose a little bit more again because i kind of lost that um Good, no, it's a pleasure, Wendy, that's what we're here for. So you could do all of this in acrylics. The only thing that is different with using oils is that you get a bit more blending time um, than you do with acrylics, but you could use a slow drying medium in much the same way to get the same sort of effect. So, you know, nothing is lost with this, but because I'm using alkyds, um, then when that dries, It'll be dry by tomorrow, so when I come back in on Monday, um, you know, you can you can get started. So you can see how Sky Portrait Arts, thank you, Carolyn, thank you, Jill, um, thank you, Diana, thank you, Janice. Yes, paint paint like the Hulk, absolutely. Um, thank you, Tanya, thank you, Jean. I will finish it. Um, it may not be... Um, it may not be this week, um, but I will certainly finish it and um, post it in the comments section of this video. So you'll see. So I'm, I'll take a photograph of it now and I'll post the reference photo and then I'll finish it off as well. So thank you so, so much for joining me. It's lovely to have you with me. The next demo is in December and uh, it's the 5th of December and it's water soluble pen. And I'm going to create a snow scene with water-soluble pens. So that'll be an interesting one, 11 o'clock on the 5th of December. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your, your Saturday morning with me. Please look after yourselves and take care during this lockdown. I know it's not easy. Um, just because we've done it once, it doesn't mean it's any easier. But hopefully we can make it easier for you by keeping your creativity topped up. So thank you so much. Uh, for your company uh, but please do try it out um, and see how you get on and, and let me know how you get on as well so thank you very much take care everybody and I'll speak to you all soon bye bye